Welcome back to Tipping Point. I'm your host, Kara McKinney. Wagner Group Mercenary Chief Yegevni Prigozhin is now in Belarus after agreeing to leave Russia following a widely covered dispute between his private military company and Russian military forces, which some are calling an attempt to at mutiny. Russian President Vladimir Putin is also dropping criminal charges of armed insurrection against Prigozhin and members of the Wagner Group, a private paramilitary organization funded by the Russian government. The group will also surrender its heavy weaponry to Russian officials who are being thanked for averting a major civil war on Saturday when members of the Wagner Group were unexpectedly seen marching toward Moscow amidst intense negotiations regarding the war in Ukraine. Seems like the tension has dissipated and just yesterday the mercenary leader issued an 11-minute audio statement in which he said regime change was not his goal and that he was simply defending the group's existence because it was supposed to cease all operations on July 1st. This is going to happen anyway, however, Prigozhin was upset about this move and was angry at several leaders inside the Russian army, which is allegedly why he was playing a demonstration to protest the inevitable merger with Russia's Ministry of Defense. Then, during the heated discussions with Wagner Group leaders, Russian forces allegedly attacked them and killed about 30 paramilitary personnel, causing the mercenary leader to call for immediate action, although no one was killed in that part of the protest, and it lasted less than 24 hours until the deal was struck. However, despite the deal for Wagner fighters to either join the Russian army or go back home or st go back home or stay in Belarus, Russian President Vladimir Putin might be preparing for a case of financial crimes now against Prigozhin's company, Concord Group, which has received $941 million via a government contract to bring food to Russian soldiers. Join us now to discuss is national security researcher John Rosamondo. John, thanks for being here tonight. Have we seen the last of this situation? Well, I think that uh, we might have seen the uh, beginning of uh, the long-term end of uh, Vladimir Putin. I think that if you look at Russian history, you'll see it's replete with uh, times when you had uh, uprisings uh, against Putin. If you uh, listen to the general SVR uh, channel on uh, Twitter, Telegram, uh, you, uh, YouTube, um, run by uh, an, in an alleged Kremlin insider, he says that the uh, general staff of the uh, Russian Defense Ministry was uh, involved in the uprising against Putin as well. If this is to be believed, it shows that there's a lot of uh, dissatisfaction with Putin's leadership. I mean, if you look back to 1991, you had uh, the uh, Russian uh, chief of the general staff, uh, Dmitry Yazov, and uh, Khrushchev, the head of uh, the KGB, rise up against Gorbachev. And you had uh, a week-long uh, coup. I think the one thing that you see now is that Putin is uh, weakened. And you know, until last week, he was unquestioned. Now there could be a lot of doubts in the minds of uh, the Russian uh, people, and especially those at the top. I mean, the people who matter are the, the, the army and uh, the FSB uh, slash SBR. If they turn against him, it's over. And so then why do you think we are seeing the Kremlin dropping charges? Are they trying to appease perhaps before that happens, as you said before, those weaknesses are further exploited within the Kremlin? Or is it just the position of weakness? How do you perhaps see some of those charges being dropped? Well, I think the thing is, is that Prigozhin and Putin go way back. I mean, they're, they're old friends, rivals, etc. Some people have uh, speculated that it was uh, akin to the... Uh, not a 2016 uh, fake coup that took place in uh, Turkey, in which uh, Erdogan's uh, intelligence agency fabricated a coup. But it seems to be that there's a lot of uh, dissension. Uh, if you listen to uh, Prigozhin's latest uh, you know, statements about his dissatisfaction with how his men were being treated, and you know, worries that um, if uh, Wagner was disbanded and his men were forced to sign contracts to join the Russian army. They would just be cannon fodder. I mean, the uh, the Wagner uh, people, uh, a lot of them are criminals. Others are, uh, you know, the soldiers. They're probably the best that uh, the Russians have. I mean, it's long been suspected that uh, the Wagner group is uh, connected with Russian military intelligence, the GRU. In fact, there were some uh, passports uh, disseminated, showing Prigozhin with a different name, so. And so how do you think that this may affect the ongoing war that we see in Ukraine? Well, I think that it could possibly end up uh, weakening uh, the morale of the Russians. Uh, I mean, we've seen uh, reports of the Ukrainians making some uh, minor uh, advances uh, down uh, 
along the uh, the Dnipro River in uh, southern uh, Ukraine. Um, the uh, Wagner uh, uh, mercenaries uh, held a, a major uh, place along the uh, Russian front lines, and uh, you know I, I think that uh, you know it could end up weakening uh, them, but. I think that Vladimir Putin is going to be the biggest casualty in the long run. And then there was some talk that our intelligence agencies had known that this was in the works and were watching it play out as it was happening. Do you think that they were had any involvement whatsoever, or is it just perhaps in their interest for something like this to be pulling apart at Putin's power in Russia? Well, my initial gut reaction was that it was possibly uh, you know an involvement of uh, the Special Activity Center of U.S. You know, uh, paramilitaries and trying to get uh, Prigozhin. There were rumors that uh, six billion dollars uh, found their way into Prigozhin's hands. There's no way to verify it at present. However, uh, I think that uh, in some ways, uh, you know, we don't know what our uh, what our government knows, rather what it doesn't know. I mean, there, I was talking with a uh, an agency friend, and uh, you know, he was uh, saying that. Uh, they relied on a lot of signals intelligence, and they didn't. He just didn't believe that they had an actual human intelligence source in Prigozhin's headquarters talking with him. Well, it's definitely interesting to see how this is all going to play out, uh, especially because it goes internationally. You have Belarus involved. I think even Turkey was making some calls. So it's definitely interesting to see how this is going to affect, as you were saying, the ongoing war in Ukraine, the stability of Russia, because if Russia were to, say, tip all the way into civil war, that could lead to a whole other can of worms for everybody. John, it's always a pleasure having you on. Thank you so much for joining us tonight.